Okay, let's continue. Naming of complex ions, right? Now, how we name a complex ions? From the previous video, we learned that what is a complex ion or what is a transition metal complex? Transition metal complex is a combination of a metal ions with ligands. Now, ligands can be more than one, and we know that ligands can have different types. We can have a monodentate, bidentate, and polydentate. All right, now let's look at the table given here. We have neutral ligand, we have anionic ligands. All right, anionic means they just have a negative charge. Now, neutral ligands, water, we don't call it as water. Okay, we call that as aqua when we talk about ligands. Okay, if we have ammonia as a ligand, then we call it as amine. CO is carbonyl. NO is nitrosyl. This is the name of the neutral ligands. All right. So for anionic ligands, for example, fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide, the halogens, the halides, and then OH and CN. Now these are the common. This is not all the ligands, but the common ligands. All right. So all these, what is the name of it? Now it's very simple. Fluorine is fluoro, chloro, bromo, iodo. Okay. I'm sure you guys know about this. This is quite simple straightforward and OH is not hydroxyl is not hydroxide in this case they call it as hydroxyl all right when you have a ligand called hydroxyl and then CN they call it as cyano okay now these are the common name for the common ligands all right now let's look at the metal metal names we have two different names here if you realize now we have cobalt and then there's another one called cobaltate we have aluminium and then aluminate, chromium, chromate, vanadium, vanadate, copper, coprate, ATE, iron, ferrite. Now, why is it different name here? The metal, the first row here is actually meant for positive metal complex. All right, the name here is actually for negative metal complex okay now i give an example what is that positive and negative metal complex all right so let's say i have again uh copper the common one okay when copper dissolves in water it's actually mixed with six water molecules example okay what would you get you're actually getting a complex ions all right Water can act as a ligand. Copper is a transition metal ion. So when they mix together, you get a complex ion with a square bracket, Cu, H2O, bracket, 6, close the square bracket. And then what is the overall charge? Now, initially, copper is 2 plus. All right. Water is neutral. So no, regardless of how many water molecules add in, the charge will still be the same, which is 2 plus. And this is the example of positive metal complex. All right, now, next I give you an example of a negative metal complex. Let's say copper again, copper two plus, you mix with um, four Cl minus chlorides. And what is the complex ions? Again, chloride is a ligand, copper is a transition metal ions, and they're able to form complex ion. So same thing, copper, bracket, Cl, 4, and then close the square bracket. And now what is the charge of the overall complex ions? Copper is 2 plus, and I have 4 negative. So 2 plus positive 2 with 4 negative. So overall difference is 2 negative. That's right. Okay, now this is the example of negative metal complex. Okay, so this is the difference between negative and positive metal complex. Okay, now again, come back here. What I'm trying to say is, if you have positive metal complex, the metal name will be as usual. Cobalt, aluminium, chromium, vanadium, copper, and iron. But if you have a negative metal complexes, then the metal name would change, slightly changes. It changes into 
and with ATE. See that? ATE. Cobaltate, aluminate, chromate, and vanitate. So they always end with ATE. Okay? Okay. Let's start with uh, naming. All right. Give you an example here. Let's erase that. Okay. Let's start all over again. Okay. Let's say I have Cu H two O six. I randomly give you a complex, and this is the common one. So first, make sure you check it is a positive metal complex. So the metal name will still be copper. All right. And you have six ligands. As usual, we name the ligand first. All right. So what is the name of ligand for water? It's actually named as aqua. And how many aqua ligands we have? We have six. So the name for it is hexa. Indicate six aqua. Okay. Hexa aqua means six water. And then you have copper. Hexa aqua copper. Two, that's indicate two plus ions. That's the name for this complex. All right, let's go for another example. The one just now, let's, as in, uh, uh, Cu, Cl4, two minus. Again, check the charge, it is a negative complex. All right, so the name of the copper will change into, what is that? Copper will turn into cupric. All right, so let's start with this. Again, you have 4Cl. So the name for it is, start with tetra. Tetra means 4. Cl is chloro. All right, tetra chloro, 4Cl, and then cuprate. Again, what is the charge of the ion? Two ion. All right. So this is how we name it. Of course, the next slide will give you more example. I already give you this two. All right. The first two done. This one done. This one done. All right. Cationic means positive. Anionic means, means negative. I hope you guys know, of course, uh, just in case. All right. What is the name of this? You have... What is the name of ammonia again in ligand? They call it as amine. And you have six. So what is the name of that? Let's show you again. Six hexaamine. Okay. Sorry. Spelling error. Supposed to have two M. All right. Supposed to have two M. So hexa a mine M M I N E. Hexa a mine. What is the name of the metal? It is a positive, so it's still cobalt. Hexa a mine cobalt. What is the charge of the metal? Two ion. Alright. Okay, next one. Let's look at the negative ions. I have C N here. What is the name of the C N? Check back the slide. It's supposed to be cyanol. So we have four, so it's tetra, cyano, all right? Iron, because it's negative, so it's no longer iron. They call it as ferrite. Tetra, cyano, ferrite, two, because it's two plus, again, iron. All right? So now, what if you have more than one type of ligand or more, different types of ligand here? Let's look at the number three, okay? Let's look at number three. So here we have amines and aqua. So how do we name them first? Alphabetical order, all right? Aqua and amine, of course, amine first. So we have tetraamine. Two water, so di aqua. And then it's a positive, so same thing, chromium. Three ions. Okay. All right, let's look at negative ions, last. 
So we have bromo and chloro. So which one first? Bromo first, alphabetical. So we have dibromo. Tetra, because of four, chloro. And then chromium become chromate. Three ions. Okay, so that's about it for the naming of complex ions. Okay, but just in case, uh, what if I give you the name and ask you about the formula? All right, so let's check about that again. Let's say I have um, hexacyano. Um, ferret. Oh, sorry. Wait. Let's erase that again, as usual. Typo. Oh. Writing error. Okay, hexacyanoferrate. Three ion. So what is the formula from this? Okay, again the same thing. We have ferret, so we know as ferret is iron. All right, square bracket, and then bracket. How many ligands here? We only have one. I mean, one type of ligand, cyano, but you have six of it. So CN six bracket. Now here the problem, the charge. How would you put the charge in? Now here is ferret three ions. The three here indicates the iron is actually 3 plus. It's not the overall charge of the complex. Don't put 3 plus here. Okay. Then if you know this is 3 plus and the overall CN is actually negative. So now you have 6. So 6 minus. So negative 6 plus 3. You get negative 3. So overall charge is 3 minus. Okay, overall charge is 3 minus, and that's how you, you, you put the overall charge. And sometimes in the questions, they may give you the formula, like that, and then ask you what is the charge of the metal ions. Okay, let's give you another example. Okay, let's say we have um, different metal ions here. Let's say just now copper, iron, chromium. Okay, let's say nickel. Okay, we have square bracket, nickel, um, H2O4, and then Cl2, random. Okay, and then I give you a chart here where it is, um, Uh, let's say you have 3 plus, okay, plus, for example, okay? So what if this is the formula given and you have a plus here? So what is the charge of the metal ions? Because the name is not given. If the name is given, then you will know nickel bracket, what is the numbers? So in this case, we just do the same thing, like how we calculate oxidation numbers, all right? So nickel, unknown, so nickel, still the same. And then water is zero, so nothing, all right? Water is neutral. And then chlorine is negative. And you have two negatives, so plus negative two equals to plus one, overall charge, okay? And then what happened? Nickel equivalent to plus one plus two. So nickel equals to plus, three and that's the oxidation numbers of nickel ions are you good all right so let's go for another example just in case let's say you have um, again chromium all right so square bracket chromium 
H2O2, and then uh, I have CN2. All right, so the overall charge here is plus again. So what is the charge of the chromium? As usual, chromium plus water is neutral, so ignore that. And then cyanide, CN is minus, you have two, so negative two equals to plus one. All right, so again, chromium here equals to plus three, the same thing. Okay, the same thing how you calculate oxidation numbers. And that's it for the naming of complex ions. Okay.